What's going on folks? Today we are going to take an early look at After Conflict, an upcoming tactical Cold War FPS game. The developers have given me access to their latest dev build, so just keep in mind that what you are seeing is pre-alpha gameplay and subject to change. So before we get into the details and what I think sets After Conflict apart from other shooters, let's go over some of the key features first. So as I mentioned, After Conflict takes place during the Cold War, and as is sort of implied in the title of the game, the war has been going on for a while, with you joining the battle in the later stages of the fight between NATO and the Warsaw Pact. Factions-wise, you can expect the good old USA, the Soviet Union, and also both the East and West Germans. However, Yugoslavia is mentioned here, which is a rare choice for Cold War games, so I'm really hopeful we get to see even more rare or unique nations in the future. Now, actually, we do get a potential teaser for another nation when they're talking about the equipment, where they mention the MG3, but also the British L2A2 Suet Scope, so the Brits may or may not be confirmed there. So talking about equipment, you can actually select your soldier's uniform, headgear, a little of equipment such as main and secondary weapons, explosives, binoculars, etc. Now, quite a bit of kit or gear customization is actually possible, when you go into the weapon you selected, you can customize quite a few, depending on the firearm, things about it as well, such as different furniture, sights, magazines, muzzle attachments, etc. Where I think After Conflict really sets itself apart from other games is the gunplay and the mechanics around firearms. They, and I quote here, pride ourselves on realism and the way our weapons feel is no exception to this. With authentic handling and reloading, accurate ballistics, material penetration, and realistic damage modeling. Now I notice it might sound a little bit abstract as of right now, but we'll dive into that a little bit further into the video. After having asked a lot of questions to the community manager, and again, thank you Spitfire for being so responsive, it seems clear that their final goal for multiplayer will be to have servers of up to 100 people fighting it out in a 50 versus 50 battle. Now, personally, I really like what he said about maps scaling in size depending on the player's number. So with 40 players to 60 to 80, the maps will obviously differ in size. Now, I'm not really sure how this would work, Personally, I would love to see this happen fluently during a multiplayer game where more people join, the map expands, but obviously that's more me speculating than anything I've actually read or heard about. Now you have a general idea of After Conflict, let's take a look at what to me personally makes this game unique and different from what other games have to offer. And that is to focus on the realistic gunplay. So as I said, you can customize your gun to a decent degree. Now it's not escape from Tarkov levels, but it's nice to see the amount of changes you can make in the pre-alpha as of right now. So when you select your gun, you can add sights, muzzle attachments, different grips, stocks, hand guards, and choose the magazine. Some are larger like 40 round 6P2 magazine for the AK-762 weapons. After you build your gun, you want to make sure to go to the ammo section. For example, if you're running a suppressor, you could opt in to bring subsonic ammo as it will give you a lot less recoil. However, don't bring subsonic ammo just for the hell of it because when you don't have a suppressor equipped, the route won't create enough pressure inside the weapon to cycle the bolt, meaning you now have a bolt action assault rifle. Personally, I have found tracers very nice. It really shows the ballistic though we have a little bit of a developer cheat we'll show you in a second to showcase the ballistics some more. I just wanted to mention here before we talk more about the guns, vehicles are going to play a bigger part in After Conflict. Now we haven't really seen much of it, there's no drivable or even enterable vehicles in this current build, but a ton of different screenshots, both air and land, are on their update, so I'll link some of those right here. They are all very much work in progress, but I'm definitely getting some Operation Flashpoint slash Project Reality vibes from the game so far. 
If the servers do indeed go to 100 players with transport vehicles and helicopters, as well as armored anti-air vehicles duking it out, this could be a very interesting indeed. For now, they have one high quality vehicle with which the dev team really has set a standard for their future vehicle work, the US M923A1 transport truck with some screenshots right here. So let's take a look at the ballistics. I ran 120 rounds of 762 through this AKM with the ballistic debug mode on. You can see how each bullet traveled after being fired from the gun, including ricochets on some surfaces or just full on shatters with fragments going everywhere on other surfaces. I also added some screenshots from their updates to showcase penetration as well as ballistics. So here we have the KS-23, technically a shotgun, it has a rifled barrel and is actually called Special Carbine by the Russians. I turned on the ballistics again here so you can see the difference between buckshot and slugs. After conflicts, weapon handling is seen here where we, after reloading three rounds and expecting the chamber it's empty until you press the T button to pump a round into the chamber. Now my personal favorite so far really has to have been firing or more so prepping before firing the RPG-22 with this absolutely beautiful animation. I'd also like to think that this first shot I fired wasn't even that far off from hitting the targets either. So another cool feature in After Conflict is their simulation of IR. Here I have a T-72 that is an enterable or drivable, but we managed to turn on the IR lamp on it, which now provides visibility for soldiers wearing night vision, though it also gives away its position to hostiles equipped with night vision, something I talked about in my Gunner Heat PC video a while back. Thus far, After Conflict feels like a modern version of Operation Flashpoint. The gunplay feels very heavy and realistic, and personally, I look forward to seeing more from the dev team in the near future. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed this early look at After Conflict. I'll catch you in the next one.